Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Cardiology and Beyond. I'm Dr. Sonali, an interventional cardiologist from India. So today we'll be learning another topic which will be heavily based on active learning and mind mapping. So let's begin. So today's discussion is going to center on a topic from congenital heart disease called TOF-like physiology or tetralogy of phallo-like physiology. Let's mind map the current topic. So we are going to start with a topic in congenital heart disease in which there are broadly three types. There's left to right shunt, there's obstructive lesions and there are synotic lesions. So the synotic lesions are further divided as you go, for, go down the screen into various types. Now broadly, they are divided into these six types of which today's focus is going to be on TOF-like physiology or those lesions which are synotic with pulmonary stenosis and VSD. And we're going to have four major questions for your active recall. These are the questions which are going to give you an answer to most of an overview of what is TOF-like physiology and what does it mean in terms of hemodynamics. What is the definition of TOF-like physiology? Now, before we begin, let us understand this particular cartoon or diagram that I have drawn. This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. There's a communication between the two ventricles. So this is a VSD, which is quite large. The LV is giving rise to the aorta as it should be. And the RV is giving rise to this pulmonary artery, which is quite a narrow structure here as it should be. The LA is draining into the LV and the RA is draining into the RV. Now to call any lesion TOF like, there are certain prerequisites that have to be checked off. So we have a few of them. Number one is the VSD is usually large, mal-aligned, or it may be so large that the interventricular septum is almost absent, or the physiology may be like a single ventricle. That is a large VSD which amounts to a single ventricle. So this is the first requisite. The second prerequisite is that there should be a significant subpulmonic obstruction. And this obstruction can be a combination of subvalvar, valvar, or supravalvar. As we can see here, there is a subvalvar obstruction, and the valve of the pulmonary artery is also thickened. The third necessity is that the combined ventricular output ejected into the aorta and pulmonary artery is determined by relative impedance of the two circulations. What does that mean? So what it means is whatever the output that is giving, given out by the RV and LV combined is determined by the amount of obstruction presented to it by either the aorta or the pulmonary artery. So in, in a TOF-like physiology, obviously the pulmonary artery is going to present with a greater impedance or a greater obstruction. And hence, the amount of output going through the aorta, in this case at least, in this diagram, will be more. The fourth point is that the ventricular systolic pressures are at systemic levels. Because the VSD is so large, the RV and LV communicate freely and they have equal systolic pressures. And their systolic pressures are in turn determined by the systolic pressure of the aorta. Since the pulmonary artery is obstructed, it does not have a say on the systolic pressures of the two ventricles. So this is what that means. The next point is that the PA pressure is usually less than 30 millimeters of mercury, which is the systolic pressure. So usually the pulmonary arterial pressure is in the range of 15 to 25 millimeters of mercury, which is less than 30. The next point is that the ventricle to PA gradient is similar across the spectrum. Now, in this case, the RV is giving rise to the pulmonary artery. So it's the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery gradient is going to be nearly constant. For example, if the aortic pressure is 120 systolic pressure, the RV and LV systolic pressure will also be 120. And the pulmonary arterial pressure is something less than 30. Suppose it is 20 then the gradient across the RV and the pulmonary artery will be 120 minus 20, which is 100 millimeters of mercury. And this gradient 
is going to remain constant no matter what. And the next point is that the pulmonary blood flow, PBF, pulmonary blood flow is less than the systemic flow. And that is obvious because the pulmonary artery has a significant obstruction which are, with a gradient which is constant. And as a result, the flow across the pulmonary artery will be less as compared to the flow across the aortic valve into the systemic artery. So these are the seven important points, if present, tell us that a particular complex congenital structure has a tough like physiology. An important question is what does the intensity of the murmur which is heard in tetralogy of fallow depend upon? Now essentially you have to know that the murmur which is heard in TOF is not across the VSD because it's very large. So the only structure which will give rise to a murmur is this subpulmonic and pulmo uh, valvar and subvalvar obstruction. So now the, the concept here, as I've already told, is that both the ventricles eject into the aorta and the pulmonary artery and the pressures in all the structures, that is the ventricles and the aorta are the same. So for example, if the systemic aortic pressure is 120, the RV and the LV systolic pressures are also 120. Since LV and RV are communicating through a very large VSD, they're going to have equal pressures. The pulmonary artery pressure is usually normal to reduced. It is usually less than 30, say a range of between 15 to 25. Now the gradient of the obstruction from the ventricle to the pulmonary artery is going to be constant regardless of the severity of this right ventricular outflow tract obstruction. So whether this obstruction anatomically, whether it is tight or less tight, it does not matter because the gradient across the RV and the pulmonary artery here is going to be determined by this fixed systolic pressure of the RV, which is 120. It was not going to rise above it. And between uh, this RV and the PA pressure, which is always going to be less than 30. So it will always be a constant gradient. So what determines the intensity of the murmur as blood flows across this obstruction? So the answer is that the intensity of the murmur varies linearly with the amount of pulmonary blood flow, which is PBF. And we know that in Tetralogy of Fallow, the pulmonary blood flow at baseline is as it is less than the, than the blood flow across the aortic valve. So how do you interpret it? Suppose you get a louder subpulponic outflow murmur or a loud murmur in the pulmonary area, it denotes a larger pulmonary blood flow, which is great. It's overcoming the obstruction and it is going to the pulmonary artery. So what that means is when you have a louder murmur, increasing amount of deoxygenated blood is going through the pulmonary artery to the lungs to get oxygenated instead of that blood going across the VSD into the aorta and causing cyanosis. As a result, when you have a greater pulmonary blood flow across the obstruction, leading to a louder murmur, it means that overall the patient will have less cyanosis. This brings us to the question that what are the examples of tof like physiology? Now, obviously, we know that typical tetralogy of fallow is the prototype of tof like physiology. And it is also associated with its various variants like pulmonary atresia, absent pulmonary valve, the Hoffman variant and TOF associated with endocardial cushion defect. Now, I won't be talking about these variants because it's not a part of today's video. I'll leave it at that and tackle it in some other video. So apart from TOF and its variants, there are six other different examples which exhibit the TOF-like physiology. So there's a reason why I have arranged them in this particular order and you shall know that subsequently. But the other examples are number one, corrected TG, TGA, that is corrected transposition of great artery or LTGA with VSD and PS. So obviously all these lesions have got to have VSD with PS for them to qualify to have TOF like physiology. The next example is double outlet right ventricle, DORV, having a sub-aortic VSD with PS. 
then a complete TGA or a DTGA, that is D transposition of great arteries with VSDPS. The next one is again another type of double outlet right ventricle, this time with a subpulmonic VSD with PS, and this is known as a toxic Bing anomaly. The next one is single ventricle VSDPS. And the last one is trichospid atresia VSDPS in which the great vessels are normally related. 